JD. Welcome to my channel. We're surrounded by watches today. Got all kinds of stuff happening. I've got the uh, two very nice uh, Bergeron, Bergeron, Bergeron um, watch tools. One is actually for oiling the watch. These are the oilers and these are all metal oils from thin to thicker. And here I've got this watch assembled now. This is the watch with the barrel issue that I had right here and the barrels the barrel issue is fixed um and it is a hunter pocket watch and i got a mystery part here but i think it's from some other job i did or something maybe some parts that i was going through because i have lots of parts so so i've got these uh, components here that i want to get back into the watch uh, i want to basically work on the balance today Get that done and dusted. Get that balance out of the way. So I want to get that balance out of the way. So I've got the balance here, and I don't want to forget the uh, hour wheel like I did earlier today. Uh, and I think I probably have a minute wheel here somewhere. I'm not sure where. No, no, maybe I don't. So that I think the minute wheel is still in the movement over here. So so I want to disassemble this balance i can't remember if i cleaned it or not i really can't remember but i'm going to disassemble it and i'm going to dunk it in alcohol and i'm going to dunk it in lighter fluid not alcohol and i'm going to clean this off i'm going to take the jewel off the top the setting um, take the cap jewel off make sure that's all clean and get ready to rock and roll and then let's get this thing just a ticking away and as you can see with this balance, there's a stud. Let me just show you up on this camera here. There's a stud right there. And I'm going to remove that, loosen the screw, and then remove that stud. This is tricky stuff, folks. Tricky stuff. Um, the screw for the stud is on this side. And I'm going to leave it on the balance tack to do this job because it's well braced. And all I need to do is unscrew that screw just a bit doesn't take much and then poke it down and then it'll be ready to go I should go for close-ups here right and there we go I loosen that screw and now I just want to poke down on this stud and there we go just poke down on the stud so going to get a little bit of lighter fluid and what I want to do is put this whole balance in the lighter fluid and it will not impact the hairspring. It'll cause grease to let go from the hairspring. And there's also, you can see the impulse jewel on the back end of this thing. Uh, and it won't loosen up the impulse jewel. Actually, uh, where, is it? where the heck is that impulse jewel? It's on the other side, I think. Let me have a look here. Oh, no, it's right there. It's the smallest little impulse jewel you've ever seen. The smallest impulse fuel I've ever witnessed is on there. So anyway, we're going to um, we're going to dunk that baby in. Yeah, and then it needs some cleaning. So I've got one of these caps here that should fit the balance should fit right in there, and I put a faux leather pad on the bottom. And that's just to prevent the uh, pivot from the balance hitting the bottom as I lower it. I'm just super, super anal retentive about stuff. Um, and then I just put some lighter fluid. This is the stuff I use. It's Zippo. Zippo lighter fluid. And I put some lighter fluid in that container. And there we go. The Zippo lighter fluid is in that container. No smoking around the watchmaker right now. Because you could cause a big boom boom. Now I'll just grab the the uh, balance by the balance itself and then see if that fits. And I'm like, oh my God, it doesn't fit. Time to remove this and put it in something else. Who's got a dunker tank? Who's got a dunker tank? I've got a dunker tank. And I've got a very nice little container for the dunker tank. I can put this in here. Um, however, I still want to protect the bottom. So... I need a piece of faux leather to throw in the bottom here so I don't don't ruin the pivot. I don't like to to have pivots floating down there, but I don't have to be perfect this time. I'm just going to cut a 
square piece like this and I'm going to put that in the bottom just throw it in like this and that should be good enough and that'll save that'll save this from being getting damaged so just put that in like this and then I could pour this like this but not over the pad I'm just going to pour it over somewhere else because it'll evaporate alrighty then now I'm going to take this this here and fill this to the top or close to the top with lighter fluid. I just want the hairspring to be filled or covered. So that should do right there and we'll let that sit for a while while I deal with the jewel. Now just a note here there are some very crazy people out there that do put the balance with the hairspring and everything into a cleaning machine I don't believe in that. I think there's too much chance of this getting damaged. Uh, so I'd rather do it this way and then blow it to agitate it a bit. And then I just get rid of the lighter fluid and we're good to go. So, so there. Now to get the screws out, what I want to do is clean that jewel cap jewel on the top here. And the only way to do it is to remove the, um, the cap. So I'm looking at it here and there's two screws to remove from the top here so very carefully you have the um, you have the pins here the regulator pins here and you don't want these pins to get crushed so you put that over the top of one of these holes and then you simply use that as a brace and then I can just remove these screws nice and carefully here if I don't talk a lot while I'm removing the screws it's because it's not easy to do. And I don't want the screws. I don't want to lose them. So I put them away. Put them out of my way. You can often see me actually drawing a circle on my mat. And sometimes I'll use that circle to put screws or whatever on there. So, And sometimes I won't. They're like this. And now if I can lift this out, wonderful. If I can't, I'll just punch it out with a stake or a piece of... No, I don't think this will come out. Yeah, I can take it out with a piece of, of pegwood, usually. The back end of, of a piece of pegwood is often good just to brace this and then just push it out. I'm not sure if this pegwood is big enough but here's the pegwood here and I just want to push this jewel out here. I'm looking at the inside of the jewel setting here. It's pretty dirty but what I want to do there is very carefully push this out. I can find a smaller hole here so it's what better braced. So this hole right here should do. And there we go. You just have to put a little pressure on it to push it out. And then the two should be stuck together. I'm going to have a look here. Yeah, okay. I can see the, the, the bottom lip and that jewel setting in the other one. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw these, jet, these jewel settings um, into the lighter fluid from before and just wash that around. So using a lot of lighter fluid today, folks. A lot of lighter fluid. Let me see. I'll get rid of that. Put that down. This stuff evaporates so friggin' quick you wouldn't believe it. I uh, I get old watching it evaporate. So what I'm going to do is take these two jewel settings here and just throw them right in there. And there's the jewel setting and there's the cap jewel. They look like they're in fairly good condition by the way. So, so there they are there. And then I have to get a paint brush and the best one to use here I want something that's small generally small so this one here I actually sharpen the end of it and all I want to do is agitate these two do two settings within the the lighter fluid to get out any uh, gunk sometimes when you're doing this the actual setting will jam up inside the paint brush and then you just have to get it removed. So, so this is the best way of doing it. And this ensures that any dirt that's in there is gone. 
and I'll show you later I have to peg up the hole if, if it needs pegging because I'll look under the microscope and and then I'll actually use my peg wood as well to make sure there's no residual stuff on this right so so after I've done that um, you want to get some watch paper right and that's not paper you watch that's watch paper and I'll show you the watch paper here you guys are getting instruction like crazy today here is the multi-purpose watch paper is that what it says no it just says security watch paper here's the watch paper a thousand sheets more sheets than you'll need in a lifetime and then you grab a sheet of watch paper and every time I go to grab a sheet I end up with two or three because it's so friggin thin and put these back for the next hundred years of use and then I uh, I want to take these jewel settings out and put them on the watch paper now one thing my old carpet I had I can use this to save the new carpet there we go put the dirty one down put this on the dirty one and now I'll save the whiteness and goodness and niceness of this new mat that I have down so let me just grab those jewel settings here jewel setting one and two and there we go again it's good to make sure you know how to use your tweezers because when you're tweezing something this small there's a chance of you screwing it up and losing it there we go I just put that container away and now um, you can use a blower to blow this thing out I just sort of move it around a bit on the watch paper and it kind of dries up really fast that way uh, and same with the capsule and once you've gotten that dried up nicely like that and like this I will check those under the microscope to make sure those jewels are still good finding jewel hunting is no fun by the way that's that's a hard thing to do so that's not a good time no so I'm gonna go look under the microscope to make these make sure these settings are still good alrighty then I just spent the last 20 minutes under the microscope so maybe 10 anyway working on these jewel settings and getting them in great shape and right now they're in great shape they're pegged out the, the jewel is setting is pegged out um, and the cap jewel is clean as heck I uh, use the tip of the pegwood to clean up any gum after I use the lighter fluid to deal with it to do what it was doing right so now I've got to put these jewels back in so I can likely um, put them in with the same technique let's see what, whether I can do it safely um, or whether I need to deal with something different here. So if I take this the jewel here, I'm just going to fling it down here and I've got to grab this now and then put it inside the uh, here and I, I'm going to push it down though once I get over the, over the uh, there we go. Now it's just sort of resting there so there's no real brace for it. I just have to make sure that I don't push down on the... Uh, there we go. There, that's in there now. And you always check on the other side. You always check on the other side to make sure the rim is all the way in. Because if it's not, the pivot will go in sideways and it won't work. So. So the rim is all the way in there, which is great. Now the second one's a little trickier because you got to do some nudging. So I think I should probably build a jig for for balances it. And the second one, I need to make sure I oil it before I put that down. Um, but a jig would help me set the balance cock down and for it to be flat. So I'd have this kind of like this, but have a jig on the side to make sure that this stays flat. So that'd be a pretty cool little design there. So that's in the future. I'm not gonna do that tonight or today. I'm gonna do that in the future. So, but I wanna oil that capsule before I put it down. So let me just put a little bit of oil in the capsule. But first, first, I'm gonna make sure the orientation is correct. Cause when I put this down, 
I want to make sure the jobby doohickeys in the cap jewel, the witness marks, are in the right direction. So I think the witness marks were there like that. So if I turn that around like this, when I pick it up again, it should be perfect. So let me just get a little bit of oil in there. I'm using 9010, version 9010 oil, so I'm just cleaning off the oiler. I want to put that in Rodico to make sure I don't have anything left on that oiler. Pick up a little oil, and you, when you pick the oil up, you pull it out fast. If you pull it out fast, you get a lot of oil. If you pull it out slowly, you get less oil. So that right? Yeah, I think that's right. So here's here's what the jewel setting looks like with the oil on it. That's the cap jewel. Now, if I do this correctly, if I screw this up, I'll just do it again. But if I do this correctly, I can grab this nice and easy. Turn that around while maintaining pressure with my tweezers. Line up It's actually hard to talk while you're doing this so there now it's lined up like this and now I can use that same piece of of pegwood and push down on that and again trying to make sure that everything is properly lined up there we go so that went straight in so now that's perfectly oiled so I just have to put the screws back in and when I put them down I always put them down in the same way I took them out so I can try to make sure the same screws go back in the same holes. So I'm doing this and then I just keep an eye on those regulator pins. If anybody out there shoots rifles or anything, it's like shooting a rifle when you kind of hold your breath just before you pull the trigger. I was in the army when I was young and I learned how to do all that stuff. And my father was a bit of a sniper. And same as my brother. I was pretty good too. We're a fairly steady-handed family. But my dad shot in Bisley, France, for the Canadian military in competitions. I never did any of that. I just had a couple of 9 milli shoots that I did when I was younger. So that's done now. That's what it kind of looks like done like that so that's in there um, I'm gonna take my brush and brush a little of this stuff away but I'm gonna put a little rod to go in the top so I don't get anything on that while I'm brushing because I want to just take a little bit of the corrosion of the bottom I don't know if it'll make a difference but I don't I just don't like it so I'm gonna get my little corrosion brush that I have I've shown you before when in my videos my numerous videos, not like I have one or two videos, I've got what I would call a boatload, or what a maritime friend of mine called a hockey sock full of videos. <laughs> so this is my brush that I have, and see how that just gets rid of that stuff without any problem at all. But I've put the rotico on top where the hole is, because I don't want any of this stuff getting anywhere near the uh, jewel setting so so I've got that just clean that up just a bit this is the watch that had a lot of corrosion if you recall I think I did it before and after on this thing so I'm praying it'll work it's been quite a job and now I'll take other Rodico and just pick up any leftover pieces of um, material from that brush I think what is that material from the brush it is glass ish so it is, what's it called? Fiberglass. I think it's called fiberglass. Anyway, this is the Bergeon, the Bergeon 6240 brush, little thing on the end to just to get more brush out. And you just press that thing on the end and the brush comes out. You can use this for quite a few years before you run out of brush. It's great for, for also for cleaning up um, corrosion on quartz watch, uh, quartz watches, you know, where the battery terminal is so it works really well for that as well 
Now I've got the uh, this here in the lighter fluid, so I'll just squirt it a little bit here. Not too much, but I've got the dirty mat on top of the nice mat, so I'm not as worried. If I get lighter fluid on my hands, it's no big deal. It just evaporates. I don't think there's any problems with that, corrosion issues or anything like that. Anyway, this will free up any gum from the hairspring. I've used this before, and it's like night and day. It's really good. And in this case here, after I've just agitated it a bit, it's been in there for quite a while. I'll just grab the stud. I've got to get in close here to do this properly. And see if I can lift this up. And there we go. Now if I can get the watch paper underneath, that'd be really good. And while it's up, I will blow on it. And that will cause a lot of it to evaporate right away. And I'll get some of the lighter fluid from in between the hairspring hairs. Now I did a watch a while back that was pretty friggin gummed up the uh, lighter the um, hairspring so I took the hairspring call it right off the balance and I stuck it in the lighter fluid and I left it there for probably an hour and after that was after I finished that it was perfect it was amazing how how well that worked I'm just squirting it here from all angles but it'll be likely be um, done really soon so just a little bit more on here and then I'm going to just touch the uh, the banking pins after as well just to make sure there's nothing on them that would be an issue so so again I'm just drying this off a little faster because it will dry in the air without a problem but just using a puffer dries it off really fast it's a good way of doing it and I can look at the pivots now and see what the story is there. I think Buddy dropped the watch. I think he dropped the watch. Let me look at this again here. I'm going to have to look at this again and see if there's issues with the pivots. Because I can see the pivot, the bottom pivot does not look like it's straight up and down. Oh no, I'm wrong. There was some gum on the pivot. So it made it look like it wasn't flat, and it actually was. Let me get the top pivot and touch that up as well. Yeah, that's um, I'm grateful for that, because I was almost ha gonna have to go buy a new balance staff. Now, as you've seen in some of my past videos, I can actually make a balance staff. So I would only make a balance staff if I can't find one to purchase. It's just impossible to find one and then I'd make one, right? So but if I but if I can find one and it's a factory balance staff, then I usually get that. So I can have a perfect factory fit, even though the ones I made in the past have been no issue with them, right? They've worked well. So I just lay that down here like this and then I can keep puffing at this and try to dry that get the rest of that lighter fluid off the hairspring. I know this is incredibly exciting stuff here, eh? so so just make the hairspring looks in good condition. It looks coiled right. It doesn't look like there's any problems with this coil. So I don't think this thing has ever been maintained. I think it's just been used and not maintained. So this should theoretically run really well when I put it all together. So so we'll see. We'll see how well it runs, right? So that's it for that. Now, what I need to do is sometimes I use different techniques to put this back on. Um, I could find a hole in the side here which might help me lower it and then put this back, the stud back in. Some people actually put it back in the watch and then lift the stud in the position, but I don't think that is a wise thing to do. I don't think that'll work. Um, in this case here, uh, sometimes I'll turn this upside down and then go on my micro in my uh, stereo microscope and lower it. That's another way of doing it. This time I may try to just use one of these holes here and then anchor that while I'm aligning the uh, stud. So 
it's it's kind of like this though which makes it an awkward position um, but unless I turn this and, um, and I can get access to this stud and I got to make sure that the um, the hairspring rides up as well right so it's, a, it's tricky stuff man tricky stuff so I'm gonna see if I can put that together I'm not sure if I want to do that on video because I'll be uh, nervous as hell all right I'm gonna try this out and and if it doesn't work well I'll go under my microscope and do it so so I want to line the triangles up here push this over as far as possible Yeah, I don't think this will work. No, that's too uh, it's too iffy to do it that way. It just doesn't feel comfortable enough to do it. So you, then if that happens, you just stop. Because under the microscope, I can do this without a problem. All right, I'm under the microscope right now, so I was going to try to record this and see what happens um, when I do record it. But I want to see if I can so first thing I did is I removed the regulator pin way out of the way so that the stud will go in here and I can just tuck the hairspring into the regulator um, properly once I've got it in there I just need to make sure I get the right angle so I've taken the balance and I've put it on a piece of Rodico this sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't it's just a a big friggin guess right so that's totally backwards right now so I gotta turn it the other way because it needs to fit the wedge the piece of pizza needs to fit in somehow so I'm gonna um, basically I'm looking at where that where that hairspring is riding right now and I need to move that the, uh, the regulator arm just a bit in so way too off here so I do this way sometimes and the other times I actually do it where I flip the balance on its back I just have to make sure I've got it's focused. I flip the balance on its back and then I do it that way. I'm going to move this in a bit more here. I want it to catch the, the curl on the uh, the turn on the balance here. So, so I can do that. I've got it in there now. There we go. Now I'm not sure if the actual hairspring is between the arms. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do. Basically, I'm gonna assume it is and tighten this up a bit. I think your view is really shitty, by the way. Only because of the angle I've got here. So I've tightened it up a bit, but now I want to look and see if that... the hairspring is between the regulator pins. I think it is, actually. Yeah, I think we're good. It is between the regulator pins, so I've got... A bit of success here. Now I think I've blocked the whole damn movement or the whole job from you, but all I did was go take my screwdriver here, go underneath and then push that the stud up. So if I turn the light down a bit you can see what's going on here. There we go. So I just went underneath here and I just pushed the stud up into the hole and then tightened it down. So so that's what I've done. And now I can detach this from the uh, Rodico because I believe it's in good shape. Roll that around so I can have a look at it from the other side. And I'll just put that down here like that. And I'll be able to look at that with my magnif or my uh, stereo microscope and see if everything is good. And then I can further tighten. Let me just zoom in a bit here. Yeah, there we go. 
Yeah, that actually looks really good. And yes, the hairspring is inside of the uh, inside of the studs. It's kind of how it looks right now, and that hairspring is riding between the uh, regulator pins. So I, it's not a it's not the best. If I had gotten or had have procured a microscope that's a that's got a camera on it, I bet you I would be getting way more views because. <laughs> This microscope does not have a camera on it, and I apologize. I bought a 5 megapixel camera for it, but but really it doesn't have one on it. So that's kind of one I have to throw into the lens to show you what it looks like. Maybe I'll do that for this, just for the heck of it. Let's, let's check this out. So this is a picture of the lens I have. It's a CMOS uh, camera, basically, and it's 5 megapixels I think so we're going to install this in the uh, stereo microscope so this is a lens I removed from the stereo microscope and then there's an adapter that the camera fits into and I hook it up to a USB port on my computer and then you can see what I'm looking at so here we've got a very close-up of video of the roller table and the impulse jewel and now we'll see if I can line up the uh, actual stud where the watch was um, studded. So here's the stud. Uh, hard to point at, but you can see it on the left-hand side. And as you can see, the hairspring is going nicely through the regulator pins without a problem. So that's a pretty good setup there, and that's a close-up of the... Uh, the actual um, back end of that move, uh, that uh, that uh, bounce cock, and you ac can actually see the hairspring coiling around there, and it's in uh, fairly good shape uh, the way it is. And let me zoom in here. So, so now you can see the hairspring. Uh, the hairspring looks really good. It's clean as heck. There's no issues at all with that hairspring. So there's the balance, it's all cleaned up, and you saw the amount of work required actually to clean the balance properly. And now I've got to fit it into the pocket watch and see whether this balance will actually start ticking. This will be fun. Now I do think I already put a little bit of a wind on this watch, but I'm going to just see whether it, I can wind it up a bit more. Keeping an eye where my hands are here so I don't mess with things here. That should be enough there. And just quickly use a piece of pegwood here, test the balance that it snaps back and forth. And it does. That's excellent. And so now we're ready to put it down. This is where the tricky part is. So what I usually do is I turn the balance around the other way. And I grab it with my tweezers. I make sure that the pallet fork is on the right side. I like to enter it from that side usually. And so I grab the balance with my tweezers very carefully. i got to turn this around without dropping it. Like that. And then I can steady the balance a bit. And you want to have it at a real angle so the impulse jewel enters the mouth of the balance. So I put it in like this very carefully like that and then I turn the watch as opposed to trying to turn my wrist in the balance and then lower it into place and I always have my finger here as a guard for the off chance that the whole thing falls down now I don't know whether that's in or not but it looks like I got some ticking happening which is excellent so this thing hasn't ticked probably in a long time so I'm going to put the screw in here, which should might help it a bit more. But while I'm doing that, I've got my um, this here, which is my Bergeron um, stick. Let me show you the stick here. And this stick helps me hold it down while I'm doing this. I like to get, I like to have the watch actually moving while I'm doing this. Uh, and the reason why is I don't want, for some reason it to be jammed up while I'm tightening this down so this is why I do this so and I don't know 
whether there is a past watchmaker here or what the history is behind this beast but but you never know right so as I'm tightening it I keep an eye on the watch um, let me just get the screw in a bit here Let's see if I can get this thing ticking again No, it's a little too tight or something. So if I get it, it's, it's moving, but a little too tight. So in this case here, I'll just back it off and see what the issue is. Because this is so old a watch, I don't really know whether it's, uh, whether there's any issues beyond there. So I'll loosen it up a bit and make sure that somehow this, the pivot, I want to make sure that the, uh, So I was kind of pushing that down as I was turning it. So I really want to make sure that this is in place. So let's give it a bit of speed here while I'm turning this. It'd be nice if I don't have to do anything with respect to... Uh, no, it seems to want to go up as I tighten the screw, which I don't like. I loosen the screw again, it wants to go down. So. This is going to be a bit of a pain in the butt to put back. I know it. I can tell right now by its behavior. So it's ticking now, but the second I start turning that screw, it's going to lift up a bit. So like this is going to be a bit finicky, I can tell. I may have to put my finger on the top. All right, that, I think that worked. So what I did there is I put my finger in the top of the movement while I was pressing down on here so that it wouldn't go anywhere. So I just still, it's there's no, the amplitude's not that great, but it's not, it's getting a bit better. So I may just let this thing keep running. Um, I also may have to make sure that the, the hairspring is free. It's not touching anything. Because these things will come around the corner and start and touch things. You don't want that to happen. So let me just, it's up super fast. So I'm going to just move this over a bit. And put it to center. That's a bit better there. And now I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the top as well, which should help it. This poor old watch is having issues, eh? And try to put some oil in the jewel holes here. Now you recall the condition of this watch from before, eh? So it's, it's, uh, it's I'm glad it's running. Because <laughs> it was hurting pretty bad before. So it's, it's actually running now, which is nice. And it's picking up speed, which is really good. So I like that. It seems to be loosening up a bit. And I'm going to put some oil on the other side too. Let's take this out. 
and always when I do this, I hope the damn thing doesn't stop. Eh? I always, you put it sideways and you're like, oh my God, and then put it upside down and it's still running. So that's good. It didn't stop. That's a good thing. And now I can put a little bit of oil on the pivot on the back here. Just a bit, not too much. Anything that could stop the watch. I think that's pretty good there. Um, and I can't recall whether I think I did oil the, uh, the mechanism though. Yeah, there's some oil on there. I recall oiling that mechanism. Yeah, that's good there. It's still ticking, which is good. It's not ticking greatly, but it is ticking, which is nice. It's really wanting to work. Rotate that, that would, that's for setting the hands. Let me just turn this around here to have a look at what's going on. I knew this thing is going to be a piece of work. Yep, I think I know where that part came from, right under there. <laughs> nice, that allows that to push this way through that hole. So I probably will end up having to disassemble this a bit to get at that part, which is a pain, but I'll have to do it. So anyway, so that's, that's it for now. I'm just going to leave this watch like this. I'll let it run for a while and I'll create the video. Um, it's ticking. It's not ticking very well, but it is ticking. So that's that's a good thing. The bad thing is not ticking strong, but we'll deal with that later. So I just want to tell the owner, so it's not over yet. There's still lots of work to do on this watch. So, so thanks a lot again for watching my videos. I thought I'd get this one done today and it would just fire up and run like crazy, but it's a little trickier than I thought. So we'll just work on this and, and try to get it going. So thanks a lot. Thanks for watching my videos, and uh, we'll catch you next time. All right, all right, all right. So there's one small part I actually forgot. I think I showed it to you, and right under there, there's a knobby. And underneath there, there's a plate. And that helps the this ratchet to move forward and backward. So that was the problem, and that's why this watch was working it was ticking but I couldn't wind it properly because it wasn't coming back so my fault I forgot the plate um, I knew there was <laughs> I'm not sure how that plate ended up escaping me but but it did so so I've got it now there's no problem now I just need to replace the uh, the ratchet wheel and the crown wheel and then we're good to go Jerry we're good to go so it should wind and run and we'll get this thing going again. All right, now it's actually working. I can push in like this and it will wind.
there we go doesn't it doesn't have a great amplitude now but if I let this thing run overnight it might the amplitude may improve so so that's the winding part and then this this mechanism pushes back out and lets me set the time so I'm doing that right now and it's moving nice and smoothly so so we'll let this thing run overnight we'll let it pick up an amplitude and then um, we'll see what it looks like in the morning and to see if there's anything else I can do to make this thing run faster better whatever because it's uh, the amplitude is a little low but I've seen other watches pick up so there was one little part mi missing that I had and I, it must have dropped out when I was reassembling the watch so so let's get that done I'll make this video and then we'll case it later and away we go